This is Nikola Jokic, and this is the biggest lie the NBA has ever told. Because here's the draft for the 2023 All-Star Game, when then two-time MVP Nikola Jokic sat and watched as LeBron and Giannis picked anyone but him. And as LeBron held the mic for the final pick, Jokic shocked everyone, standing up and picking himself as he whispered something mysterious to LeBron in the process. A seemingly innocent exchange. The comments from this video even said, I honestly interpret this as a gentleman move to save Larry Markkinen from being the last pick only. We know how Nikola Jokic responds to disrespect. And Jokic, oh no! And since this moment, Nikola Jokic has never lost a regular season game to LeBron James and has only lost one playoff game, sweeping LeBron and the Lakers in 2023 and sending them home again in 2024 in five. The more we look here, the deeper this goes. Before he even made an all-star game, Jokic scored on LeBron and said, You're gonna think about that one for a while, aren't you? No. I tried to cut the end of the switch, I think that's a mismatch for us. In game two of the 2023 playoffs, LeBron clearly flopped early on in the fourth quarter, and in response, Jokic matched him flop for flop, then went on to win finals MVP and the championship that very same year, the same season that All-Star Draft was held. The next season, in game one of the first round, Jokic dunked on LeBron to end the game and send a statement as, the media wants us to only see one side of Nikola Jokic, the family-loving, horse-riding Serbian who claims that, you know, nobody likes his, uh, his job or maybe they do they're lying but there is one thing that never lies and that is stats so here are the best centers in nba history from the ages of 23 to 28 post the 1975 merger and as you can see compared to kareem abdul jabbar shaquille o'neal moses malone and hakeem olajuwon Jokic not only holds his own he not only easily leads in assists per game but when we dig deeper and look at advanced numbers nikola Jokic is second to only kareem in win shares per 48 minutes. He is also first by a wide, wide margin in true shooting percentage, a box score plus minus, and a value over replacement player. The advanced numbers here show us that no center has ever been more valuable to their team than Nikola Jokic, and this season, despite the narrative that he doesn't care as much as others, that he doesn't practice in the offseason, Jokic is having the best statistical year of his life, averaging 29.7 points, 13.7 rebounds, and 11.7 seven assists per game while he is currently on pace to set the NBA record for both PER and box score plus minus in a single season. Looking at his career as a whole, Jokic holds the record for all-time PER, all-time win shares per 48 minutes, and all-time box score plus minus. The NBA has said it's looking for its face, but right now in front of our eyes, we are watching as Nikola Jokic has the chance to go down as the best center of all time in the post-merger era, of course, the only thing is, there is something holding Nikola Jokic back that must be talked about. A question that actually hovers over Jokic's entire career. So what's up, Mike here, and to really understand Nikola Jokic's place in NBA history and rise to stardom, we need to immediately ask, how did a three-time MVP possibly get drafted 41st during a Taco Bell commercial? A delicious cheesy quesadilla wrapped around a beefy burrito. The new Quesarito from Taco Bell. In his rookie year, Nikola Jokic finished third in the Rookie of the Year race, which means obviously, even as a second round pick, Nikola was more than able to hold his own immediately, which has us asking the question, how did scouts get this so wrong? Why was Jokic disrespected at every turn of his life? The Nuggets even drafted a center, Yusuf Nurkic, with the 16th pick well ahead of Jokic in the 2014 draft. These are the types of things that fuel any top tier competitor, such as Nikola Jokic. And even today, with three MVPs on his shelf, Nikola Jokic is not given the same respect as a prime Shaquille O'Neal at all. This is despite the fact that when we compare their apex primes, the best seasons of both players' careers, many say that Jokic actually had better numbers than Shaq. But guys, before we continue, I'm very excited to say that this video is sponsored by SeatGeek. With the NFL, NBA, and NHL in full swing, I want to be watching the games live and in person. And that is why our friends at SeatGeek have you covered everyone not just new users everyone can use my code mike10 for 10 percent off of any ticket on seeky sports festivals concerts
concerts, you name it, SeatGeek has you covered as SeatGeek also rates tickets on a scale of one to 10. Green being good, red being bad, so look for those green dots. And no matter how many times you have bought tickets before, again, using code Mike10 is going to get you 10% off of your order. So what are you waiting for? Open your SeatGeek app, use my code Mike10 and get 10% off of your order right now because this offer is only available for a limited time. That is code Mike10 for 10% off at SeatGeek. Thank you again to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back into today's video. Yes, saying that Jokic's Apex Prime was better than Shaq's is a huge statement. However, without a Kobe Bryant on his roster, Nikola Jokic's championship season not only compares well to Shaq, I'll take a stance and say I think it was better, but I wanna know what you think because in terms of pure numbers at the age of 27, which was the 2000 championship season for the Lakers where Shaq won his only MVP, Shaq did average more points per game, more rebounds per game, and more blocks per game while Nikola Jokic, of course, averaged more assists per game. The thing is though, there is a reason why Jokic is considered an analytics <laughs> darling. Shaq had an Achilles heel that kept him from ever becoming the greatest center of all time, his free throw shooting. So when we compare Shaq and Jokic's advanced numbers, when we dig deeper, we find that Shaq does hold a slight edge in value over replacement player, but in box score plus minus an effective field goal percentage, it is not even close advantage Jokic. This is the Shaq that is remembered as being the most dominant center of all time. The guy that you could dump the basketball into and he was going to get you a basket no matter what. A lot of people consider this Shaq as the best single season center of all time as 2000 Shaq is what we expect from a dominant big man. Not only does he have the numbers, but also Shaq was physically dominant, an athletic marvel. In 2000, Shaq had 305 dunks, which helped him to shoot 76.2% at the rim. However, from three to 10 feet, he shot just 45% and he took more attempts from that range than he did from around the basket. Nikola Jokic in his 2023 championship season dunked the ball just 29 times, almost 300 times less than Shaq. Despite this, Jokic actually shot better than Shaq at the rim as Jokic made 77.4% of his shots around the basket and from three to 10 feet, Jokic shot 61.4%. In the 2023 season, Nikola Jokic's true shooting percentage was 70% while Shaq's in 2000 was 57.8. At first glance, you might chalk this up to three point shooting. However, Jokic only made 1.23s a game in 2023. Really, it was his efficiency around the basket that makes the difference here. So with this in mind, on the offensive end at least, who was really more dominant? If you pick Shaq, that's perfectly fine. I respect that pick. I'm going Jokic. I do think we can all agree the numbers tell an interesting story here. And we also have to remember Shaq had Kobe Bryant, a top 10 player of all time. Nikola Jokic has never played with another all-star in his life. Let me repeat that for the people in the back. Since he officially joined the Denver Nuggets roster, Nikola Jokic has not had a single teammate make the all-star team. The Nuggets only work because Jokic is that historically great and his on the court, off the court numbers prove this. We're going to stay in the year 2023 for Jokic to stay consistent and because it's his title season. But we can look at the years 2022, 2024, and now in 2025 as well. And the story would be the exact same thing here. When Jokic is on the court, the Nuggets are a title contender. When he's off the court, they would seemingly be contending for Cooper Flat. As in 2023, Denver had an offensive rating of 125.6 and a defensive rating of 113.6 when Jokic was on the court. Ratings that would have ranked the Nuggets first in the NBA in 2023 in offense and 10th in defense if Jokic played every second. Without Jokic on the court though, those numbers plummet. Denver's offensive rating goes to 106.8, which would rank dead last by a wide margin, and their defensive rating would go to 116.7, which would rank 24th. So in other words, without Jokic on the court, in 2023, the Nuggets were one of the worst teams in the entire NBA, but with him on the court, they won the championship. So at this point, you may be asking yourself, Mike, you obviously love Nikola Jokic. Why are you not saying that Jokic could be the best center of all time? Why are you only saying that he could be the second best center in NBA history in the post-merger era? Well, that is partially because of the fact that Nikola Jokic has said he wants to retire somewhat early, something that I think we need to wait and see for. But really, the answer to why Jokic probably will not be considered the best center ever is that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's historic resume is in 
insane. Now, Kareem is a special case here. He did play in both the pre and post merger eras, winning three MVPs in the pre merger era, but then winning another three MVPs in the post merger era. And overall, Kareem's resume is just staggering six MVPs, six titles, 19 all star appearances, and 15 all NBA selections is a lot. Kareem's prime was also before the Defensive Player of the Year award was introduced in 1983. In 1983, Kareem was 35. When he joined the NBA in 1970, he was 22. Back then, they did not record blocks as a stat. However, once the league did decide to record blocks in 1974, from the ages of 26 to 34, Kareem averaged 3.3 blocks a game. Kareem's historic resume would be even better, possibly untouchable, if he had three or four or five Defensive Player of the Year awards. That is how great and dominant he was for 20 years years. He was an all-star at the age of 41, and in 1986, at the age of 38, he finished fifth in the MVP race. So in order for someone to beat Kareem, or in order for Nikola Jokic to beat Kareem, that center would have to have a prime window that was Michael Jordan-esque, which includes both MVPs and championships. What is very interesting, though, is that at the age of 29, Jokic has only gotten better. Looking at the stats, if we compare Nikola Jokic at 29 to our big four, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Moses Malone, Hakeem Olajuwon, and Shaq. It is Nikola Jokic who leads all of these all-time greats in points, rebounds, and assists per game while digging deeper again, things only get better. As in true shooting percentage, win shares per 48 minutes, and box score plus minus, there is no comparison. Jokic clears all of these legends by a wide, wide margin. Which means, at 29, Nikola Jokic is still improving and is currently playing the best basketball of his life. That to me is a scary thought. Thank you for watching. You're awesome and we all know it and peace.